Hello everyone. In the last two videos, we saw how to use normalizing flows for 1D data. In this video, we will see how to implement normalizing flows for two-dimensional data. Let's review the idea behind normalizing flows for 1D data. So if we have a function which maps x to z, then the relationship between the probability density of x and z is given by the equation log of p of x is equal to log of p of z plus log of the absolute value of dz by dx and maximizing log p of x is equivalent to maximizing the sum of log pz and log of absolute value of dz by dx. Now let's rewrite this equation in simple language. So p of x is the probability density of x, p of z is the probability density of z and what is dz by dx? dz by dx is the amount by which the space around x is stretched or shrunk. So this relationship which is expressed here in non-mathematical terms holds for x regardless of its dimensionality. So even if x is two-dimensional, this relationship still holds. So what we can do is, we can now rewrite this into mathematical language again, but this time we would like to write in a more general form which works for any number of dimensions. So p of x is equal to p of z times the absolute value of the determinant of j of f which is basically the amount by which the space around x is stretched or shrunk. And for clarity, we can write these terms as p of x1, x2, which is basically the vector x is equal to p of z1, z2 times the absolute value of this determinant. We can take a look at one example of what a Jacobian looks like. So if we have a vector z, as a function of a vector x, then the Jacobian matrix for this function looks like uh, the one as shown on the right hand side of the screen and its determinant will be equal to 4x1 sin x1 minus x2 times cos x1. When we select a function f, We would like to have it such that the determinant is not zero, which means the function is invertible and it should be easy to evaluate. So how do we make a function easy to evaluate? It comes from the observation that if one of these terms, for instance, dz1 by dx2 is equal to zero, then this determinant becomes equal to the product of its diagonal values in which case the relationship becomes p of x1 x2 is equal to p of z1 z2 times the absolute value of the diagonal entries so what does it mean to say that dz1 by dx2 is equal to zero what it means is that z1 is not a function of x2 but z2 is a function of x1 and x2 which means we can define a CDF which takes x1 as input and spits out z1 and we will have another CDF which takes as input x1 and x2 and spits out z2. Now we can write the second equation CDF2 as a black box which takes x2 as input and spits out z2 but its parameters are a function of x1 which means there is one more function which takes x1 as input and spits out cdf2 which takes x2 as input and spits out z2 and this function which takes x1 as input can be any complicated function so it's typically a neural network and then the basic idea behind uh, maximizing the log likelihood is the same. 
we define p of z1 z2 to be uniform which means that's what we want to get so to be more precise we want to find a function which maps x to z such that z is as close to, as close to uniform as possible and now let's look at the implementation of normalizing flows for 2d data in this case uh, this is what our 2d data looks like it looks like two crescents and uh, this can be created easily using an API from sklearn so this is what the whole code looks like and uh, we will use 2000 samples for training set and 1000 samples for testing set now let's look at the model We want to define a model which maps x1, x2 to z1, z2. What we can do is, we can write one function which maps x1 to z1 and another function which maps x2 to z2. Let's look at the function which maps x1 to z1. It is simply going to be a CDF whose parameters are sigmas and mu's and uh, it maps x1 to z1 just the way we have seen for 1D data. The case for mapping x2 to z2 is a bit more interesting because in this case uh, we need to have a function which splits out the variables for CDF2 which then maps x2 to z2 just the way we have seen previously. So let's take a look at how this uh, function which takes x1 as input and spits out the parameters for CDF2 looks like. It is basically a very simple neural network which takes x1 as input and its output is going to be the parameters for the CDF2. So its output size is going to be three times the number of components in the CDF. Why? Because uh, for each component we need to know the weight, the mu and the sigma. And these two parts highlight the function definition and uh, its execution. And now once we have defined a CDF, we can define the conditional flow which is conditioned on x1 of which one parameter is the CDF, the CDF params which we just defined. The output of CDF params is used to define the mu, sigmas and weights to be used to map x2 to z2. So let's take a closer look at this. So CDF params is the function which takes x1 as input, it is conditioned on x1 and it spits out mu's log sigmas and weight logits which are used by CDF2 which maps x2 to z2 so this is how we go from an idea which was defined only in mathematical terms to an implementation of it. And the whole flow for mapping x to z is basically a wrapper which contains flow 1D and conditional flow 1D which are 1D functions for mapping x1 and x2 to z1 and z2 respectively. So its first step is separating x1 and x2, calculating z1 and z2 separately and then combining z1 and z2 to form the vector z again. And the loss function is the same as the loss functions we have seen for the 1D case. It is simply an implementation of this formula. And in this case we define our target distribution to be uniform just like the previous cases and after training this is what the output looks like 
So this is a plot of our training and testing data and uh, this is what the model learns after the training is over and this is the distribution of z which was mapped by the function and it was uh, trying to map it to something as close to uniform as possible which is evident here so yeah that's the idea behind uh, making normalizing flows work for two dimensions and uh, in the next video we will see how we can extend the same idea to make it work for more than two dimensions and lastly the credits for most of the ideas and the code go to the deep unsupervised learning course from UC Berkeley. So also check out this repository. Thank you.